Welcome back, guys. It is the Brothers Geek Out podcast. We have a returning guest to the show. Uh, I want to say a massive thank you to Troy Booth for coming on, also known as Captain Tempest. But I wanted to know, bro, why did you the the origin for the for the the name? Because it sounds so familiar, and I, I keep thinking Thunderbirds, but it's not. It's something else. You're not far off. You're not far off. Hold up, man. Hold on. Hold on. Thunderbirds. I think there's a there's another character within that same sort of like genre with my first name. <laughs> it's gonna bug. It's not. It's not Stingray. Is it not Stingray? No, no. Yeah, not. Stingray. Sting. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Oh my. God. What? How come? Tell me, bro. Give me the origin story of this. Uh, so the main the main character's called Troy Tempest. Ah. Um, okay. So I used to go to a I used to go to a football camp. And my coach used to give people nicknames, and mine was the Tempest. Sick. Okay, see that works so well. <laughs> and then Captain, because my first like proper cosplay was Captain America. Yeah, so just, that just stuck. That's brilliant, bro. And I see. Look, look. Even my guests dress up for the show. I know I look comfortable, but <laughs> he's got the dead Can't get the outfit on. on with this on, unfortunately. But <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks for dressing up, bro, man. You look awesome. Uh, right. It was the one that you wore at Comic Con. Yeah, I love this suit. I just it love is a good suit. It, it is has become like one of my mains now. Is it because of comfortability as well, a bit? Because it's, some cosplay outfits can be like. Yeah, it's comfortable. It's easy to get on, but I just, I also love the character. I just love him. So we got some like exciting news with Daredevil recently and a sneak peek at the trailer of Echo as well. Like, tell me, bro, how did you feel about that? I was just so happy. Literally, the inst- the moment Kingpin grabs that guy, throws him and just beats him to death. I was like, we're back. <laughs> we're back. We've got we, we've we, got Wilson Fisk back. I w- I was really hoping that because my fear was that it would be like the tone of uh, what uh, Hawkeye was. Yeah, that just didn't do it for me. Yeah, same. It's, and I was I, like, I, I enjoyed Hawkeye. I'm not not denying. I enjoyed mm. Hawkeye, but Fisk was done dirty. Mm-hmm. Like Kate Bishop wouldn't have had a chance. She'd Not have been exactly. torn in torn in half by <laughs> Wilson Fisk. Because like everyone gets mistaken that in that he's a overweight guy. In the comics, that's just pure muscle. Mm-hmm. That he is just a pure block of muscle. It's powerhouse. So, powerhouse. Absolute powerhouse. Oh, he'd just torn it to shreds. He would have. Definitely would have. And no, it's great. It's great. It's great to see that it's it's given us the Netflix tone. It's going to be R rated as well, which is pleasant because I feel like they need to take a bit more risk with 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 characters like that and and the street level characters as well, definitely. Yeah, for sure. And then obviously we got the announcement of Marvel Spotlight as well, mm. which just indicates that they have listened to that side that we are getting more R rated stuff. Yes, definitely. Which... I think. Oh, these six, characters it's... need that. Yeah. These these definitely. characters need that. No, definitely, Just definitely. How how they are, the stuff they deal with, the stuff that's happening. Obviously, obviously, you can go R rated and over the top with the intergalactic stuff and the stuff like that. Like the King in Black run, the mm-hmm. Venom run was pretty dark and pretty Very. gruesome in some parts. But for me, like the Daredevil scene and all that bit has to just remain dark. Mm-hmm. It just Definitely. needs to stay with that theme. It can't have a, a like a tonal shift, and, and it was very difficult to see uh, how Daredevil was represented in She-Hulk. It was amazing to see that suit. It was amazing to see the way his powers worked in that sort of way. But I, I found it very difficult because of the tone of it. Yeah, I mean... I... I'm not a massive fan of the yellow suit. 
Not I really. don't mind it. No, I don't mind it. I've I've never understood it. Like I love Daredevil, but you think of the devil, you straight away think, well, he's wearing red. Of course, he's got to wear red. And then you see the original, it's like he's wearing bright yellow. He looks like a canary. <laughs> okay, so recently I found out that some of the characters in like the Marvel universe, the reason why they wore bright costumes was to to make them the main focus when it's they when they're in dangerous situations. So if there was a crowd there, because a Wolverine suit, oh, it was a bright yellow suit. You could pick him out. You'd pick him out and everybody would focus oh, their visual okay. on that. Same thing with Daredevil. That was the original concept that it was a suit that will throw people off when they see it, that all the focus goes on him. Right. So, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Interesting. Something yeah. that I learned only recently. I've been reading it for ages, but it was like, oh my God, why did they do, like, why did they put them in them bright costumes for? And I was like, let me read up on this. And then it was like, oh my God, like, it's it's true. It's because they wanted to keep uh, civilians and people out of the way and, and keep them out of danger. That so they were sense. the main focus. So, yeah, really cool well, think, idea. But we both both agree that he looks better in red. Oh yeah, no, definitely, bro. No, without a doubt. <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, I got. It was good to see you at Comic Con, bro. And like you were wearing a suit as well, and uh, you did a couple of shoots. And guys, I'm gonna share some pictures later on. Keep an eye on our socials. Uh. Full on weekend for yourself, bro, man. Like, how how did you find it this time around? <clears throat> it was really good. I actually thought I've put a TikTok up just talking about the con. Uh, I didn't go into any of the stuff before, obviously, hotel prices and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And that I just spoke about my experience. Mm-hmm. And I think the actual con itself was the best MCM has been in quite a while. Mm-hmm. I, it was. I thought the Saturday... Were you, I can't remember. Were you there Saturday? No, yes. I, I, I was Saturday. only there Friday. Yeah. Friday. Oh, Friday. Yeah. The Saturday, obviously, <clears throat> is usually absolutely rammed. And it was incredibly busy. Hmm. But it didn't feel as packed, if you get what I mean. Like, okay. the, yeah. the actual floor felt more spaced out, that there was more area that you could actually walk around. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've been quite strict when it comes to the type of vendors they have there. And as you know, with Comic Cons, a lot of the vendors they're they're repeated, so you can get the same stuff in the same place. And I, I saw your video; it was you picked out on some interesting points where uh, we go to Comic Con because you know it's the comic area, so we get to see comic books and things like that, and different stores as well. And I think for a good couple of years, it was really anime focused, and I think yeah. it's been a yeah, I think. Definitely, yeah. The last time it was for me like a really good Comic Con is when, uh, before they got bought out by Reed, which own and uh, New York Comic Con, uh, was they had all the artists from Marvel and DC from the states. They had Frank Miller, they had John Romita Jr., they had Andy Cuba, wow. Chris Claremont. All of my favorite artists and writers were there in one room. Frank Miller, like the big I, weeks. I genuinely was like speechless i couldn't talk in yeah. front of him because i was like oh my god this is frank miller but the dark knight 300 ronin i had my comic books he signed them i still couldn't say a word and this is me three years ago before four, i think no sorry just before covid four four or five years ago when he was here and it was me starting off and i was like i'm getting to meet some of my favorite artists and writers how do you react in front of some of them and yeah that was <laughs> Like, that was peak Comic-Con for me. Like, I basically went there on a Friday. Basically, I wanted to meet John Romita Jr. He's one of my favourite artists. Not many people oh, do awesome. like his artwork. But I... No, I love it. For me, it was that Daredevil, Born Again. And he's done a couple of other comic books that I adore. And, bro, his queue was so long. It was unbelievable that it made me buy a ticket for Saturday. So I went on a Friday to meet him. I met everybody else. I went on Saturday. Bro, I couldn't even meet him on Saturday. I had a wedding to go to oh the next God. day. And I said, I need to meet John Romita. So I bought a ticket for Sunday. <laughs> and I went back and I finally got to meet him, man. And it was such a pleasure. Totally. Did you go to the wedding? Hmm? I oh, know, I did. 
Oh, you managed to get the wedding as well. I was I was late. I was really late. But I got there. Uh, I showed my face, and it's a good I was excuse. A really good excuse. <laughs> it was. I, so... I'm, not, I'm not denying that, mate. It was a great excuse. If you'd have turned up and I'd have been angry, and you just said, "This is the reason," I'd just gone, "Yeah, fair dues." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, it was it, luckily it was peak time by the time I got there. But it was all right. It was fine. But as I was, my main point was that Comic Con hasn't felt that sort of vibe again ever since since I've gone back. It's been great. I've met loads of people in the community, which is always nice. And that makes my part of Comic-Con, but it did lose that, uh, the comic feel to it because of the anime portion of it. I love anime as well. I've got nothing against anime. Just, oh, yeah, I, felt like it was, yeah. I felt like it was overtaken. It was like they, um, they, they heard that people liked anime and just went, oh, that's all you want. Mm. So it was just like that they didn't think that someone might like anime, might like, the comics and that like fantasy stuff exactly and then this time it felt like it was really it, it felt like it was for everything like and then i love the introduction of like hasbro pulse stand i'm a marvel legends collector so i went so mental cool. when i saw that i was like i didn't even know they got it and i just was like straight over there <laughs> i left them just was like bye <laughs> um and then they'd obviously got the gaming stuff. They'd got the Tekken tournament going on. Oh, which sick. that was good. I'm awful at them sort of games, but it was cool to watch people who can play them. Yeah, definitely um, was. Definitely. Final uh, Fantasy, they'd got that. And yeah, they'd got loads of stuff this time. I thought it was, on the whole, I thought the con itself was a lot, lot better. Is there still stuff that could be improved? There always is. Um, but I, I feel as though this is the first time in a while they had actually listened to people. I think um, they had to, bro, because there has been a lot they, of drama well, going they did, on. Yeah, there was obviously the the um the cursed child thing that was didn't go well, which mm -hmm. I totally understand why people were. I mean, I was I got friends who were like, "This is not right," and it it wasn't like because of the J.K. Rowling thing. It was like a bit insensitive considering the stuff they were saying before but we'll not go too far into no, that, no, no, no. i agree at least they at least they listened and yeah. heard what people were saying and were like oh yeah this is a bit this isn't right um but they did have good guests as well like they, they got did. the whole critical role cast yeah and that's amazing i only know that from vox machina on amazon and then i've subsequently gone back and i'm listening now to the podcast i'm on like episode 10 Smashed so it. that Absolutely. was really cool to see they got the whole team of that there no it's good they so, they they needed yeah, to up good. their game i think a little bit when it came to the guests because they they were drying out at one point and i was like oh man there's like i know they will be catered for some other fans but it was like oh that there was nobody there i was gonna say like you know what hey man i'm willing to take my card out and let me go see this person because i really want to meet them uh this time yeah. around they had quite quite a few but i mean even uh the artist sadly oh my god it was amazing bro was that's so my that's my part of it it was massive and yeah you know i spent yeah. so much time in there it was brilliant bro and i got to meet so many other artists and speak to people and uh, i think jeremy adams who does some work for like dc who i recently interviewed on mortal kombat legends cage match he yeah. was the writer oh it was just awesome to you know when you meet somebody face to face and he was like oh my god we had such a blast on the podcast it's great to see you in person uh yeah it's amazing just to get people's perspective about the industry and 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 where things are and how people see things and like uh, I, I, you know what? I, I don't usually go on TikTok as much now. I only promote the podcast on there. And uh, somebody put up a video regarding, and this is just a bit of like the movie world. I know the Marvels came out, and you know a lot of. Well, I'm not saying fans, but I don't know what it is about comic book movies at the moment. Now, people just absolutely destroy and hate it, and. It triggers me because I'm a fan and I still love it. Yes, yeah, some things don't hit in the right way, but I suppose yeah. I don't I don't like shitting on people's work. That's always been me. Constructive feedback is good because you know, you you you'd probably be the same when it comes to how does this suit look? Do I need to make any arrangements, changes? You know, constructive feedback works very well. But I think this person was like absolutely destroying the Marvels. And I'm like, the first thing's first. He hasn't even seen it yet. 
he's going off rotten tomatoes, which is like the worst thing to do. Like, how do you like? I, I think how do we come to a point where society has really disconnected itself away from fantasy, where people don't want to just enjoy themselves no more. They they want to see the bad in things, and, yeah, and they want I'm... people to fail. That's such a shame, yeah. man. What are the... Just going quickly back to the MCM thing, I think one of the yeah. things they've got to improve, why they had to improve, is because they've also lost the exclusivity to the XL. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes. Next year, I knew that. Yes. All the other cons are coming. There's like five or six now. There's like Fantasy Con, Mega Con, Sci Fi, Monopoly. And like, they've got to up their game a little bit because they've now got competition at their well, own massive. venue. That, that's, 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 yeah. that's a whole game changer, basically. That's. Yeah. Which has opened up the world for listen, bro. I'm gonna go to all of them. I, that's amazing. I'm so oh, happy. Yeah, I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like more things for me to do in that culture. So yeah. why not? Uh, and plus, they got to make money. Up, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Gotta save up because uh, doing San, um, doing uh, WonderCon in LA next year. Oh, so nice. I've got, I've got to save up. So awesome. Cool. Gotta cool. save up, good. save a bit of money for that. <laughs> um, oh yeah, don't blame me. But my um, I always say my my outlook on the films is, I don't enjoy every single one to the same extent. Like I love, say, Winter Soldier more than I do Love and Thunder. I enjoyed Love and Thunder. I've got a bit of a soft spot for Love and Thunder still. Hmm. But I then look back at when I was a kid, reading Cats America, reading Daredevil, reading Spider Man, and all there was was there was the odd Toby movie, with uh. Toby and Sam, obviously Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there was the odd X Men movie, and that was it. And no one cared about these characters that I knew. I was like, oh, I want to be Captain America. And people were like, who? Exactly. Who the hell's yeah. that guy? And then yeah, now, yeah. yeah, I I do think we've obviously today we've had the report that they've pushed everything back. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, obviously next year we've only got Deadpool. That is the only MCU movie coming out. Yeah. Um I actually think it's a good thing. Oh yeah, definitely, bro. I'm, I'm gonna agree with I you. I think it's because it, we're gonna watch that and then we're gonna have such a gap and we're gonna be get to the end of that and be like I want I want something else, I want something else. Um I actually think twenty twenty four they've got four movies. I would again I'd say just give us two. Spread it out, yeah. Spread I, it out. Yeah. I Make think it's more spectacles because no, it's no, you're like, right. Making spectacles, yeah, yeah. Because we've had one movie, and then it's like, oh, that's finished. The next next month, we have the next Marvel movie, or the next month we have the TV series. It's like you don't get time to talk about that one as much as I've enjoyed it. It's like right onto the next one. Onto you the don't. Next one, onto you the don't. Next one. And it's it's so hard because I think, I think like what happened to uh, Wakanda Forever was upsetting because swept under. It got yeah, bro, because it's just like it didn't give it time to breathe, and you know a lot of us are still grieving, and I was like, I didn't get to grieve properly. Like it was such an amazing film, I, I one of my favorites that has come out so far, and I just felt like it didn't have time to breathe, and 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 a lot more people just suddenly forgot about it and didn't really talk about it, and I was like, oh, I'm really upset because even when it came on like Disney Plus, I've probably seen it like six times already, so it's like yeah. Like it doesn't, and it doesn't let. I feel like personally, it doesn't let a film become like a cult classic. Like Winter Soldier for me oh. is a cult classic mm-hmm. movie. Like, and that is my favorite MCU movie. And everybody's yeah, like, "Oh, what about definitely. Infinity War? Infinity War, End Games?" That's like they're great movies, but nothing will touch the level of creativity and that feel of espionage and like, it just felt like a whole different film to what we've, what, we've, what we usually get, but it, it actually felt like a proper comic book, Captain America comic book, like yeah. the comic book. And, yeah. people for, and people forget without Winter Soldier, we wouldn't have had the Russo brothers and we wouldn't have had Infinity exactly. War and we wouldn't have had an end game. Exactly. Like to exactly. the same, they, that kicked that off. Everyone saw Winter Soldier and Marvel were like, these guys know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's give them more. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, I think I think spread it out more. Like 
give it the time to uh for us to resonate with what we've just watched um like the marvels i i mean i've seen that it's not tracking to do well obviously i can't see it till sunday because of other stuff but at least you've now got the marvels and then you've got a long time to have conversations about that film with if there is conversations which obviously exactly I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't, don't want to know yet. <laughs> nah, I want to go in blind. No, nah, exactly. And that's what you um, want to be doing. Give me a second, bro. You keep keep going and let me yeah, know. Um, uh, let me just check up. I, I just think we we need the re a bit of a restructure as well. Obviously, it sounds like obviously the strikes are over now. Stuff's starting to come back out. But even yes. with going back to Daredevil, what they've done with Daredevil. Like, it came out that they'd obviously filmed four episodes before the strikes happened. Mm -hmm. And then Kevin Feige and, by the sounds of it, some of the executives watched these episodes and were like, this is not it. Mm. This is not right. And then scrapped them four episodes and have gone back to drawing board. And people were like, oh, the series is doomed. It's doomed and that. I saw it as a good thing. Because at least they saw that, like... This isn't the character we've seen. Mm. Um, and I, 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 I'm still in the camp that I think we've obviously just finished Loki season two, which I have watched, so we can have a word about it yes, if you want we'll in a minute. Yeah, we'll talk about it next, yeah. Um, yeah, but I still think three three seasons are dead of all the best Marvel shows. I just, no, I don't, I'm going to totally agree with you. That final third season fight, with Fisk, Bullseye, and D. The rage when he gets Fisk and just tells him, you're going to live out your miserable life behind bars and you're never going to see her. And he's just screaming at you, I beat you. That is just so good. And that just every time I'm there, like fired up watching that, I sometimes just get it on YouTube and just watch that fight. It's a wicked. It's a. It's a wit. I think the third season. You know what? It, all of them are great. I feel like they had better structure. They had time to breathe. Uh, none of the episodes felt like there were filler episodes, where you could get shows now where like it's well we've we've seen it with some of the Marvel ones. They they're just rushed. You know, you you get yeah. the first yes. two episodes that keeps it slow, and then it's rushed. But what they did with Loki. Which I think they learned their 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 mistake, bro. Loki was sick, bro. <laughs> oh, mate. So I I I enjoyed the first season. I wasn't Same. huge on it. I I I openly say that like I wasn't massively huge on One Division. Just wasn't my style. I enjoyed the final ones. It just but Loki. I enjoyed it. I was like, okay, yeah, it was good. But then season two got me. And that final... Oh, the, are, we, are we going spoilers? Are we going spoilers? <clears throat> what do we do? All right. Spoiler <laughs> messages, guys. We're letting you know now. Spoilers. One, two, three. Let's go, bro. That final scene where he is walking towards the loom and gets that damn new suit. Oh, like I've never wanted to cosplay Loki, and I straight away saw that and went, "That is fire!" And I might do that. <laughs> it looks it awesome, just... bro. He looked um, ethereal. Mm-hmm. That was the word I got from it. It was like the flowing cape, the horns slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and the horns were like they weren't pure gold. There was black in there, and mm-hmm. and then. It reminded me of slightly what they did with Doctor Strange with the cape with the arms, but the yes. cape of Loki was the timelines. Oh, it's just and then he flicks them around and catches them all. Oh, oh. bro, that's and it becomes insane. the world tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's Which that is, is that is insane. That is a comic there. book. That's a comic book show. That is a comic book show. That's yeah. fantasy in at its best. That's because um. It's Agent of Asgard. Yeah, yeah. In a right, way, yeah. they've done a sort yeah. of they've sort of their own version. So he's no longer the god of mischief in Agent of Asgard. He becomes the god of stories, and exactly. in a way, he now is that. He exactly. is. He is the MCU. Exactly. That's he's nuts, holding bro. it together, and 
I listened to a podcast earlier and the guy went, now what needs to happen is we don't need to see Tom Hiddleston. We don't need to see him until Secret Wars and he has a portal scene where he comes through and it's low-key just coming through from the Citadel at the end of time to fight whatever we've got at that point. If it's the Beyonder, if it is a Kang or... Oh. Let's, it just yeah, that, puts that everything... Up. I don't know. I This whole show for me has been absolutely brilliant. I feel like the writers did a great job uh, and the cast were amazing. Ki Hu Kwan, Ki Hu Kwan is like the heart of that show. Uh, I love OB and what he's done. Jonathan Majors as Victor Timely was brilliant. But even that scene where he kind of, he, he sorry, Loki, like Timely knew what he was doing. Like how many times has he done this? His character kind of flipped there. Yeah. It wasn't how it was in how he was in season one, which probably works out really well because of the the growth of the character. But it was like I I I've had this plan for ages. This was going to happen anyway. Like, what can you do different? Uh, time travel, man. Timeline and multiverse stories. This is insane, bro. And it's it's the first time I feel that we've had little connections here and there. We've had like Hawkeye and. Black Widow with Yelena, we had a little connection yep. there and bits like that. It's the first time something has really connected. Like this was taking place obviously out of time, but then we got told about oh, there was a Kang on 616, but they've managed to deal with him. So that's also confirmed that that Kang was not the main Kang. We have not seen exactly his full form. There is another one out there that we've obviously seen. Um, oh, I can't remember the names at the minute. Is it Scarlet Centurion? Uh, yeah. The Immortal Mortis? I can't remember the name of them, but the three main ones. The three main ones, yeah. I still don't think they're the main Kangs. No. I think there's going to be another one. I think... And you could even, if they do do... If they do continue with Kang, obviously we don't know at the minute what's happening. You could even switch it up like they do with the MCU and make a version of Kang the Beyonder. Oh my god! Who is the guy who makes uh, who starts Secret Wars oh, and makes shit. Battle World? Shit, that'd be insane, bro. Uh, that would be so insane if they do that. There is a lot they could do, but I still I don't think we've seen the main Kang. I could just go on and on. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. They ha- we haven't. We haven't got the main yeah. Kang. And none of them are. None None of what we've seen so far are not the main Kang. So you're right. I think if they go with that, bro, it's exactly what you said. We'll come back to this podcast in a couple of years and you'll be like, I remember saying that. So here, here's a yeah. bookmark for you guys in the, in the past or in the future that yeah. Troy has already said this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many things that like... In there, so obviously we've heard all the rumors of the original six coming back and all this and all that. I don't think it's a good idea, personally. I've done a TikTok on that as well. I don't think. I think bringing back the original six for maybe a cameo at Secret Wars would be okay. I think bringing them back full time, trying that would is just damage control and won't work. I don't think that's the key. To let go of that, is the stories. Mm -hmm. The stories is the key. Exactly. Good stories. I mean. There's a TikTok I'm going to do. I'm going to be quite a longish one, but I'll I'll do a quick breakdown of what one of the things I think that should have already been done. It's with Love and Thunder. Mm-hmm. So the story of Love and Thunder, we all know, was just it was too humorous. Although I got a bit of a soft spot, it was too comedic. There is the scene where I've got a take on it after though. Yeah, you've had okay. the scene where they've gone to, um. Where they've met Russell Crowe. I can't remember the name of the place, but it's Zeus. You've had all yeah, that. Yeah. And then they're flying towards the planet with Gore. But first off, Gore should have actually bushered someone because he didn't. Um, and rather than have the old oh, Jane, I love you moment and all that, you have Jane sit down with Thor and just go, right, I need to stop you a minute before we get here. Mm. What is wrong? Because this is not you. 
you, you this this humor this funniness this facade this isn't you and have him snap and break down and just be like it's a front mm. i've been covering for the trauma i've just had for the last five years have him show that trauma the whole tone of the movie changes then you have the serious thaw back the humor's mm. gone have the ending be full serious and then the child comes along from gore that's what gives him purpose that's what takes the trauma away rather than having this humorous guy the whole way through you just snap change the tone i've so i've had so many conversations with my brother about this and he said something similar to what you said was that we needed a breakdown moment for thor and there's nothing wrong with one line of jokes and stuff like that but to totally completely shift it to what the character is now is it's been a bit cring it like the more i watch it and i can still watch it yeah yeah, it was, yeah. It, 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 it was cringy and it was like i've still seen it i still watch it but i still put it on because i still enjoy it for what it is but yeah. i just feel like you see what they did with loki and how they yeah because from season one that moment he was sitting in that room and he saw his life before his eyes in that timeline and the amount of loss he went through. He felt that in that moment. And I felt like that changed him as a character. And bro, I love Loki's journey at the moment now because I like him as the good guy. Uh, but I can see the pain and he's learned more and you know he wants people around him. He wants things. And it made him so worthy, bro. It's unbelievable like how much love I've got for Loki now because I was like... You know, before God of Mitch- Mischief, a bit troublesome. Don't know which side oh, is going to be on. You just make me think something. You just made Bro. me think something now. Go on. You just said it's made Loki worthy. Do you think he could lift the hammer now? Bro. Trust me. I genuinely feel like... <laughs> <laughs> like, that word you just said, I was like... Hang on a minute, because he's totally reformed and completely like sacrificed his entire life for the entire multiverse. Cool. You know what? He can, bro. After that, that's a sacrifice, right? That is oh, a yeah, sacrifice. He's literally just got to sit there like that for eternity. Bro. He's worthy, bro. He's had such a beautiful yeah. transition mm-hmm. in this. Even when, like the moment when he was talking to Sylvie about not losing everybody, and he wants his friends back. Bro, that hit me, man. Like, who who doesn't want their friends yeah. around? Who doesn't want the people they love around them? He he, he saw them yeah. as his own little family. I love that, bro. So good. Such a good... Yeah, so good. We, need, we needed that with Thor. Thor mm. just... The humour carried on too long, and obviously by the sounds of it, they are doing Thor... The Thor 5 is in early talks, um, which I actually read today, which I didn't realise... Hemsworth, if that happens, will beat Christopher Reeve's record for the most solo superhero films of any character. That's crazy, right? Um, That'd be awesome. I think Tyker's out. Ooh. I think I think Tyker's out. I've just read bits that Tyker won't be doing five. And I don't think you should. It depends on what he does, bro, because like Thor Ragnarok is an absolute amazing movie. That's still in my kind of top 10 of Marvel movies because of, yeah, because it wasn't but too again, You had that switch at the end. Yeah, yeah you had the exactly, switch yeah, at the, the end switch, where he goes against yeah. Hella. He just exactly. like totally Full on. changed, um, which they sort of like let the let loose a little bit with Love and Thunder and went too far let's, with it. Let's get some fresh eyes for, for, for number five, bro. As much as I love Taiki, I think he's great, but a bit of a change would be... I wouldn't, would be... Know, I wouldn't know who. I wouldn't know who. Nah. <laughs> Somebody new. Come on. Fresh eyes. Like, I sometimes I feel like a project can be... Look, they do it in the comic books, bro. They get different writers, different artists. They're going to do that with this, which yeah. is... They can rep- they'll find somebody who will give Thor some justice back because, because of Endgames... It made me appreciate Thor, uh, Thor two again, Dark World, because that's mm-hmm. the great thing about you when we're reading comic books and it's all interconnected. And what they did with the movie is to interconnect it in that way again. It was like, 
you know what, man, you just made me enjoy another movie that I didn't really give a lot of love to because it makes me want to go back and watch it again. So it, it's nice that they can do this. I Hopefully they can do that. But with Thor Love and Thunder, bro, like, I still enjoyed it. I still feel like there were moments in there where he, they didn't, sh- like, they could have showed him process his grief in a different way. That would have been a great scene. But, you know, with Gore's daughter, I don't know. I I found it quite emotional because he found he found another reason to keep going. On purpose. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of found a purpose. Um, I've got, I've got a question for you that I've actually thought of today. I was Go thinking on. a bit too. Obviously, we were talking, the original thing was Echo and mm-hmm. Daredevil, and we got the announcement of Marvel Spotlight. Yep. What characters would you pick to be in Marvel Spotlight? Like, if you could pick a comic ca- character from Marvel that, rather than going straight into the MCU, they start in Marvel Spotlight. Because I, I see Marvel Spotlight as pretty much it's Marvel Knights, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, no, that's right, that's Spotlight. right. Oh, Who man. would you pick? I know my first one straight away. Probably be the same one I'm going to pick right now. And I've been waiting for this guy to get involved for ages now. And I thought they would have done it. I mean, they did it in in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I just felt like... It's a Ghost Rider. Yeah, of course, bro. (laughs) It's Ghost Rider. It's it's Ghost Rider. It's got to be Ghost Rider. For me, like, like, I still love those Nicolas Cage movies. And then I love... I'm forgetting that. Oh, the campies in some place, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, What was it called? Is it DA? Not Diego. Is it? Uh, it's the guy from Terminator Salvation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Not Salvation. Um. Oh God, Dark Fate. Sorry. Dark Fate, it's and he's, he was in uh, The Last of Diego Us. Diego Luna. Well. Is it Diego Luna? No, no, he's Andor. Uh, I'm gonna check it now because to, it's gonna. Uh, be sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to look. Uh, Terminator. Ghost Rider. Uh, Ghost Rider. Agents of Shield. His name, what's the name? What's the cost? Cost Gabriel Luna. Gabriel Luna. Okay, yeah, there we go. Gabriel, I wasn't far off. I got mixed up. No, yeah. no, 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 definitely. Uh, and I, I think you transfer Moon Knight over. That's another one. You definitely. Moon Knight. Yeah, definitely. I really Jake, enjoyed that. Jake though, Lockley. That's a good one. Jake. Oh, oh my god. See, there's the so much Jake they can Lockley. do. Yes. Um, Punisher's got to be in there. Oh my god, Frank Castle's got to be there. Your brother would go mad for that, wouldn't he? Because <laughs> he's back. He is back. He's he... back. We, we we've already been told he is in reborn again. Yes, definitely. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing uh, Frank Castle back and uh, John Berthnall playing the character as well. Uh, oh, there was something else that came up. Yeah, my brother absolutely loves it. I know we got a new Frank Castle, in, not Frank Castle. I know we got a new Punisher in the comic books coming soon as well, because uh, Frank passed away in the things. last one. It's a good comic I've book. Heard... I think they changed a little. Yeah. They got a bit mystical, but my brother overall loves the character. I think it, it, for him, it's the mental health aspect of it. The uh, the the trauma that people go through when it when you know being a, a veteran uh i think it hits close to him i think because because of my granddad was in the army uh that character and the trauma that he went through and then what happened to everybody knows what happens to his family it it plays a big part but yeah. i don't know why it resonates with my brother so much because it scares me sometimes and i know he loves his uh martial arts and the rest of it i'm like bro just don't do anything <laughs> crazy like Please <laughs> stay calm. Stay calm. I I know you got like a. He's buying not by he's not. I, I just can imagine him in his in Dubai now with all of his weapons and stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing, bro? Uh, but he's always but, talking. He, he talks about the people driving, doesn't he? Can you imagine he's just at one point just going to go full Frank Castle on someone who's rammed him up the ass? <laughs> always, always bless him, bless him. He's calmed down now. He's he's literally calmed down a lot. I know. Tri- going to be driving and they're going to hit him and he's going to go one patch two patch but he died 
I, I wouldn't be surprised, bro. I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he cracks me up. Uh, bro, you know what? Uh, you sent me a clip the other day, and I thought, let me try and integrate it with uh, what we do. And like, I'm going to ask you some controversial questions. Actually, they're not even controversial. Some questions about the DCEU. Uh, <laughs> but, be but before that, like you did, uh, uh, you cosplayed Shazam on Sunday, didn't you? Saturday. At the comic -Con. Saturday, I, sorry. How, how was that, Saturday. bro? That was good. Some of the photos I saw oh, were brilliant, bro. Shazam's good fun. It was it's good fun. It's it's leading to something else. It was a test for something else as well. I think you know it, but I'm not revealing it because it's a project I'm working on with a friend. Okay, uh, yes, Lucas, cool. You met him. Yes, yes, yes I, I did. told you I what did. it was. And it was a bit of a test as well, because it's like, right, how do I feel in this to do mm. other things? So but Shazam, it's good fun. Like I love doing the dark characters um a lot, but then it's nice just to have the odd one where it's just I can kick back and have some fun with this. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. And that's uh, guys, quite a bit. You have to check out his Instagram page. Go and check his TikToks. There. The links are all in my description, guys. I'm, I'm not joking. You're going to love all the builds, the suits, and, and, and stuff he gets up to. Plus, this guy is like superhero ripped, man. It's unbelievable. Like, I have to, once he three, finishes his exam. Three exams, weeks out. <laughs> three weeks out now. From a from a photo shoot, I've been cutting for nine weeks. I've got three weeks left, and then I've got the shoot on the Friday, Comic Con on the Friday as well. I go straight from the shoot to the con Saturday, and then there's a big thing on Sunday happening, which I'm not disclosing what it is. Something's happening on the Sunday. Okay, all for. right, we we got wait. We'll wait and see, but. Uh... Yeah. You building anything at the moment now, bro? Yeah, or is it secret behind me? It is. I haven't shown it anyone. Okay, we're gonna wait. We're gonna. You're gonna have to wait. Have to wait. Go, go <laughs> I'm to. I'm doing it. this. I'll, I'll show you. I'm, I'm doing this at the minute. Okay, cool. So this this isn't actually yellow. This is the this is the filler putty. Okay. Um, because someone the other day went, "Oh, you're doing the yellow suit." Uh, I might be. I might not be. Um. Mm -hmm. There is another daredevil coming because I am obsessed long, with this guy. How long has that taken you to put together? Uh, so my friend 3D printed it. So mm -hmm. it took him a couple of hours. Um, and then I've used knifing putty, which you use on cars when you're filling the cracks in. That's right, uh, yeah. I haven't had a chance to sand it yet, so it's all just filled in. But it's literally going to be the same process that I did for this one. And you can see how so, smooth. That's sick. I got I love that. Them. So good. Um, so I put that on, sand it, put more on, sand it, put more on, sand it, until it's smooth. Then I go in with filler primer, which is a yeah. thinner version of that. And I think this had about ten sands on it. The whole Bro. thing sanded about ten times. I love that. Okay, so Just... I know who to get in contact when I when I do Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Wolverine for someone back there that I'm oh, right. making at the minute. My friend How's Craig. Um, it's all right. It just needs painting. Okay, cool. Oh, oh, I'm looking forward done. to seeing that. Is that he's um he's done the helmet? It's my own yeah. design. Oh wow. Okay, that's gonna um, be interesting. He just okay. We gotta see that. Printed helmet. He printed mm. a helmet, and um, it actually Emily needed. Um, her armor for Jane and oh. at the time we'd both got no money at all so I said to Craig I was like right I'll build you a suit um, in exchange for this whatever you want and he just he was like well I've got this helmet you might as well build the suit for it and he said I said well w which version do you want and he just went your own go wild with it so all right, bro. I'm looking forward to seeing that because yeah. that's that that'd be it, 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 uh, one th the main thing is it's yellow Okay, cool. It is yellow. Oh, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward yellow. to that. Uh, all right, bro. Let's go into these uh, questions. I've got them written out. I uh... myself up here sending you that the other day. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, I that's, that's all right. Up sending you that. 
Well, maybe, maybe, because I did it to my brother and he was <laughs> thrown off and he was like, eh, I don't know what to say because some of it's controversial. Some of it could be yeah, not what okay. people want to hear, but some of it is con- the My brother's smart anyway, bless him. He's he's good with constructive feedback because, again, yeah, we still love it. Like, uh, so. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get this. Okay. All right. Here's the first one. What are your thoughts on the DCEU's decision decision to have multiple actors portray the same character in different movies, like the various Batmans? And be honest, bro. Don't worry, man. Nobody's going to hurt you. <laughs> I don't think it was executed as well as it could have been. That's a diplomatic answer, bro. <laughs> um, Come on, I man. Think... We can be. We can, I, think flash, we can be free. I don't think the Flash did it justice. If, if if we're going off the Flash, I don't think the Flash did it justice. I think you had an opportunity yeah. there, and you 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 missed the mark. Interesting. I think, okay. I think I I think you should have had proper Flashpoint. It shouldn't have been. I, it shouldn't have been Michael Keaton. There you go. Okay. It should have been Michael wow. Keaton. <laughs> it should have been uh, Jeffrey D. Morgan. As Thomas Wayne, Flashpoint Batman. Ooh, that would have been so good, bro. That would have been. That's my that take on so that. Good. As much as I'd like to see Michael Keaton, that story shouldn't have been Michael Keaton. Because you know, originally I thought that he was going to be playing Thomas Wayne, hmm. and I wouldn't because have I think minded. People that. get mistaken. That isn't the. 1980s Batman. No. Because it's Barry in his own timeline. That's just a re-altered version of Ben Affleck's Batman. Exactly. It's not the 1980s Batman. He hasn't lived through any of that. Exactly. It's a different exactly. Bruce. Exactly. There you go, peeps. There you go, peeps. All right, you got that one. Uh, how do you feel about Gerard Leto's Joker in Suicide Squad compared to Heath Ledger's... Heath Ledger's Iconic portrayal in the Dark Knight. Uh, he sucker punched. Heath Ledger sucker punched Jared Leto through the floor with his performance, didn't he? Really? <laughs> Leto just... definitely agree. Definitely, bro. I don't know what what was going on there. Really, they tried something yeah. different, bro. And the fact that we ain't seen the eye cut yet, which I'd like to see because I feel like it'd give the character more justice. Uh. Mm. And here's me, I'm not... Listen, man, studios are going to do what they're going to do because all they want to see is money. And I know that yeah. Warner Brothers and DC have gone through a lot of stuff. Uh, and I'm trying to play it safe as well so I don't get myself in trouble as well. <laughs> but I'm just being honest, guys, man. You you have my thoughts. Anyway, as much as I always say I love your stuff, I do love it. But there are things that could be... It's inconsistency, isn't it, I suppose? And I just feel like... Yeah, just for me, it wasn't it wasn't the the Joker. It was a gangster mm. rather than the Joker. I d- I didn't like the laugh. The laugh put me off so much. The I haven't heard that in ages. I need to actually watch it again because it was more of like a ah, ah, yeah yeah it was yeah it was like it, well it wasn't yeah. I didn't the laugh just no Heath Ledger's was just iconic. There you go. It's the easy answer, isn't it? Heath Ledger wins. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But thanks for like prolonging it, which is always good. Yeah. Uh moving forward, do you think the DCEU continue to explore darker and more mature themes in its films, or should it take a different approach to attract a broader audience? Right. I can't answer yes or no on this. I think both. That's I good. Think it depends That's on good. the character. My brother said the same thing, man. I, in... I have always thought you've got Batman, Superman. If you're doing Superman, we've got Superman Legacy, which ugh, I cannot wait for that film. I am a James Gunn stan. I'm sorry. He is the top person I want to meet out of anyone now. I've met Cena. Gunn is up there. Charlie Cox is up there. There's a few that are up there, but James Gunn is on Mount Rushmore for me to meet. I just oh, please, one day, one day, I want it, I want it. I've got a Peacemaker logo sat next to me, ready for him. If I ever get the opportunity, literally, he's sat there waiting. Like, to, if I ever get the opportunity, that's going. But 
Pete. Uh, by the by, sorry. Um, no, 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 it's fine. Superman, light and hopeful. It's all bright colours. We have the sun. We have Metropolis looking incredible. And then you've got Gotham, literally across the water. And we have dark, gritty, horrible city with Batman. And that's where you do the dark tone and stuff. Bring them together. The reason they are so good together is because they are lockerheads. They are complete opposites. Mm -hmm. That's where I think it needs to be. It needs to be. I think there's more of a contrast than in Marvel with that sort of thing. Because mm -hmm. I think the, the contrast between the characters, if you look at a Batman comic and a Superman comic, they are polar opposites. Yeah, in definitely. Definitely. Co colour, tone. And I think that's that's what you need to do. I think rather than saying, oh, we need to go lighter on everything. Nah. Polar opposites, then the opposites attract. No, exactly that. Exactly that. All right, bro. Before we end the show, the last question, bro. Let's ask you. Are you satisfied on how the DCEU handle its villains and which one stood out for you the most and why? Making me think of the villains now. It's like... <laughs> uh, it, it, there so weren't are we many, DC, bro. Are we, are we, it's so we're we going DCU, so we're starting from Man of Steel, aren't we? Yeah. No. The answer's no. I thought Zod was good in the first mm. Man of Steel. Um, and then... You had Lex. I think it was just the... You had Lex, which, again, I wasn't mad on Jesse Eisenberg as Lex. They had um, Deathstroke, which they should have given us Deathstroke, man. Yeah, Deathstroke could have been cool, but again, we never got it, so I can't really comment on that one. Mm -hmm. The others are a bit forgettable, really. It's, it, I'm even struggling to think of what some of them were. I don't blame um, you, bro, because... We so Doomsday, we, obviously. Yeah, we've got Doomsday, which... Air, Ares. Ares. Steppenwolf. Uh, yeah. Cheetah. Oh, don't talk about Wonder Woman 84. Oh, no, 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 no. I love that movie, bro. I love that movie. I love that movie. I love that movie. No, I'm oh, joking. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, I was going to say, Jesus. I was going to like, what? <laughs> Thank God for that. Pedro oh. Pascal was like fully Donald Trump in that movie, the way he was acting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, I mean, it's, it's a hard one. And it's a question I should ask because I've told my brother to get some questions for me, but like the the villains have been forgettable and you know what Zack Snyder did kind of had for this universe to have dark seed hair would have been great to see it kind of level out really quickly but we know the issues they had along the way in their journey uh, he didn't have any issues I know what he went through uh and you know god forbid yeah, man that was well, awful like, honestly uh, was, yeah so like I know that, that was just an awful situation for him entirely and it was handled completely wrong um, exactly exactly that. um but yeah yeah i don't think the villains i don't think the villains were rememberable so no no uh, it's a tough one it's a tough one definitely I, sorry I, I, I'm, in that position. I'm one of the people that is <laughs> i'm one of the people that is in i'm hopeful for what's to come same here. with the dc yeah. Definitely. Uh, Look, DCU I, now. It's not DCU, DCU is it? That's it's right. DCU. 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 Um, uh, I'm hopeful. I have faith in James. Hopeful. Definitely. James will smash it. He'll knock it out of the park. Suicide Squad was amazing, bro. You know, and, there, and there you go. We spoke about Peacemaker ages ago. So brilliant. And Peacemaker oh. really, really touched on some stuff, man, which was like, insanely good but he's a great writer bro james is a great oh, writer. peacemaker when you go into it i think i can't if we said last time when i was on like peacemaker peacemaker now that i think about it did the take of what love of thunder should have actually done with thor the character was humorous but in the background he was broken mm -hmm. exactly that exactly that chris is broken in that series and actually, yeah, that's the way that Thor should have been handled in Love of Thunder. I've never thought of that. 
it's no, the bro, same exactly. sort of thing. The guy is completely broken, and then he's funny, hiding it a little bit. But underneath, this guy is done. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm not, I'm looking forward to season two. Uh, they're moving everything to the studios that they're building around the corner near my house, which is amazing. Uh, dude, I'm, I am going to literally. Insane. I am going to. I am going to put a, an. Uh, a, I was going to say a tweet. It's not. It's X now, isn't it? What do you actually call it? Is it a tweet or is it an X? I'm going to put an X out. I don't know. Yeah. I am literally just going to put. James, I have been doing this. I've danced with John. I've made dances of your thing. I will turn up any day you want me to be, and I will stand in the background drinking a coffee in Peacemaker Season 2 for free. Please, can I be there? I'm going to put a tweet up one day. Just Why not? try bro, it. Just, bro, you know how the universe works, bro. It, it's, it's amazing how opportunities and things can happen. You already know that, like with what happened with Cena. Yeah. That's an epic, an epic, epic moment. Uh, you just never know, bro. You never know. I, I remember I actually, when I got the. Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got the thing though. I think that if I, when I meet, I meet James. If I meet James, <laughs> when I meet James, if I meet him, I think I'd be incredibly happy, but I think I'd cry. Why not, because bro? Because the guy doesn't realize. He made Peacemaker, and Peacemaker's a cosplayer doing that. That character changed my life. Mm -hmm. I got to meet my childhood hero. I have made so many friends through that character that I wouldn't have met. That that man actually changed my life without knowing it. That's amazing. Um, and I think, I, would, I think I'd tell him that, and I would tear up. And he'll probably hug you, bro. He'll probably hug you in the process. I so I just hope that one day it happens. I just that that's the one thing I want one day. Oh, bro, you're gonna get me emotional, bro. I remember for me that <laughs> was that was uh that was Kevin Smith. That was Kevin oh. Smith, and I remember uh we got a friend called the Geek is still, and I'll always shout out, give yeah, shout out to him. Follow him, yeah. He, I've not had he, the chance to meet him, but I'd love to meet him. Yeah, bro, uh, absolutely awesome fella. Uh, gave me the call and said, what are you doing today? And I was like, I'm at work. And he was like, do you want to meet Kevin Smith? And I was like, hopefully nobody from work's listened to this. Called in sick immediately. And I don't blame you. Like the wedding. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, that was much. I was just about to have my daughter and... You know, I I love the type of dad he is, and I want to be able to be like that as well. And I I teared up, and he was like, "Man, don't get me emotional, man." Uh, and I was like, "I I I don't know what to say because you you're you're like for me the the next geek guru, you know what I mean?" Uh, and I do like his opinion because he's so positive, man. And yeah, bro, I feel you, bro. I'll get emotional. So yeah, I think yeah, it just. He's the one person that I've just like, I want to meet. Like, I, I hope that someone, someone from Warner Brothers might see this. Um, because I'd just love to do some Peacemaker and him see it or be there. I mean, he's seen my dances and he even comment, he even commented on my happy birthday post to him. Bro, <laughs> like, you're the best. Trust me, universe works in great ways. Yeah, someone at Warner Brothers UK. If they want a peacemaker, <laughs> I will literally drop every single thing. And if my car's broken, run to London. There you go, guys. He said it. It's out there in the universe now, bro. So trust me. <laughs> good things come to good people. Uh, listen, man, thank you so much for making the time for me this evening. Uh, I love doing it, mate. Bro, listen, we've we've got loads to talk about anyway. Plus, are you talking about Wolverine costumes? I, I need one. Uh, guys, make sure you're following Troy. His socials are all in the link in the description box. You guys are going to be flooded with so much content from this as well. But guys, thank you so much for just the love and bro, tro, bro thank you for the time and the love as well. Because I've only met you in the past probably year. Yeah, yeah. And cool. there's not many people that I can conversate with and geek out with, and always a pleasure to talk to and see as well. 
uh, here's a guy who has love and passion for what he does. Bro, love you, man. Thank you for coming on, man. No worries, mate. I've got loads of Daredevil stuff still come as well on Instagram as well. There is four shoots lined up now for Daredevil. Look at this guy. Um, Look at this guy. I've managed to get a whole Defenders group together. Smashed um, it. Smashed it. That's what I was wondering then, what was happening in those posts. I was like, okay, something's happening. Something's happening. Oh, we've got I've got a Defenders group together. And then I've just taken it upon myself like, like to get Daredevil into the MCU. And I've just said, you do an MCU hero. I want to shoot Daredevil with. When are we shooting? Awesome. Absolutely um, awesome. Guys, you've got so some great content coming. Like Loads of stuff to come. Uh, as I said, always thankful and grateful for listening to the podcast and watching the podcast. Make sure you click like, subscribe, comment. Uh, but we just, I mean, you can get to see our beautiful faces. So if you listen to the podcast on the streaming platforms, get onto the YouTube page and show us some love in there. You get to see Troy's beautiful face on the podcast. That's what it's all about, guys, sharing the love. But uh, Troy. Oh, okay. As, Here's one then uh, to come onto YouTube. Right. I can't show you what I've been making, but if I do that... Okay, see, you guys need to come to the YouTube page. It's a big hint. You guys got to come to the YouTube page. Come to the YouTube page <laughs> and subscribe and watch this episode. There you hint. go. I'm going to put... Oh, <laughs> God, you smashed him. All right, cool, bro. Massive, massive salute to you, bro.